Hello football fans, Chris Terrell here with Rotopros.com to bring you another daily fantasy football video. Before we do that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Rotopros. If you're new, not a member of Rotopros, head over to Rotopros.com today. It's where you're going to find all of our articles, uh, links to our chat, uh, videos showing everything. We're a daily fantasy sports community. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, cheat sheets for every sport, uh, lineup cores. If you go over to uh, the website and click the yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, um, you'll get you'll be able to come in, sign up, get your free trial. For a $5 weekly subscription, you get a three-day trial. And then for the monthly and yearly subscription, you will get a seven-day trial. If you use promo code RP50 um, upon signing up for that free trial, you will save 50% off on your first payment. That it gets you access into our Slack chat. Um, in our Slack chat community, we've got a lot of different stuff. Um, we've got breakdowns of different slates that we're covering. Like I said, we've got sample lineups that we share um you know leaving three or four players out of that lineup to kind of help the player build one-on-one -on -one coaching with our coaches this is just one of our channels this is the nfl channel you can get access to the running running back touch share sheet that's updated throughout the season um, there's wide receiver targets all sorts of information that we provide throughout the week stats trends matchup information odds injury updates all that sort of stuff get that in our slack chat as well as our articles um, and of course the cheat sheets which are accessible in our chat as well so get over to roto pros today check all that out hit us up in the slack chat if you have any questions with that let's get into this week's picks all right in this video i'm going to walk you through my dfs nfl cheat sheet i'm going to show you what some of the columns mean what some of the stats mean how to read it uh, when doing your research and uh, also a little bit into G what I look for for stats in terms of GPP versus cash games and pretty much just a look into my overall um, scope every week and how I go about my research process and coming up with my core plays, teams to target, that sort of thing. So let's get started here. Um, first tab here you're going to see is the matchup tab. This is where I start every week. This is just a list of every game. We've got showing the slate, um, main slate here, Sunday night football, Monday night football. So what you're looking for here, obviously we've got stats, we've got points per game, passing, offense, rushing, uh, pace, red zone, O-line, um, opponent, D-line, because we want to compare those, and fantasy points against position. So how we look at that. First of all, I'm going to be looking at team. So under team, we've got Miami. The top team's always going to be the away team. Bottom team's always going to be home. And then it shows the opponent. And that the reason I show the opponent there is if we break down row three here, which is Miami, um, at Jacksonville the spread is three so Miami's a plus three projected for 22.3 points in a game that has a 47 and a half over under now when we get into the points per points per game the team offense is again the team so we're on row three here so Miami is averaging 19 and a half points per game their opponent which is Jacksonville is allowing 26.5 points per game um, I have that combined here because I just want to see which games have the possibility of being the highest scoring. So not only do I look at the Vegas total, but I will compare uh, the team's offense and the opponent's defense. Combine those points per game as well. Kind of gives us a look. For the most part, we're going to see that within that over-under um, pretty close to that number. We can also find, you know, in terms of betting, if we see maybe a total that is like the combined total here for Jacksonville, 54 and a half, but the combined total for Miami is 46. So that kind of has me leaning the over in that matchup, but that's just one way that I use um, the sheet here. But for keep going across the sheet, so 61%, that means Miami throws the ball 61% of the time, while Jacksonville. Um, correlating over here with row four throws the ball 56.5 percent of the time then we've got yards per game in the pass um, versus how many yards the opponent allows per game same thing with rushing we've got the percentage the rushing yards per game the opponent defense and then pace um, this would be seconds per play so the higher rank here just means a team uh, runs more plays over the course of the game so miami's 13th in pace while jacksonville's 26th that just means Miami runs more plays. So I'm looking for matchups where maybe both teams are high paced. Um, one that kind of stands out here down the list, Tennessee is sixth in pace while Minnesota is fifth. Out of all the matchups on Sunday, there is only two, Detroit and Arizona being the other, where both teams are top 10 in pace. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for that. More plays per game means more opportunity for fantasy points. So that's why I have that there. Red zone ranking, this is touchdowns per red zone trip. So team offense, uh, Miami is 20th in 
touchdowns per red zone trip that's inside the 20 yard line and then we're going to compare that to the opponent's defensive red zone how many touchdowns um, they have allowed per red zone trip to the opponent so obviously um, lower rank Jacksonville second that means they've scored the second most touchdowns per red zone trip while uh, the defense here for Miami is 27 so they've allowed a lot of touchdowns per red zone trip so that adds up really nice. So you're looking for green. Anything here when you're looking at stats, green's going to be good for the team that you're looking at. Red's going to be bad. Same with the opponent. Red's going to be bad for the opponent uh, numbers, while green's going to be good. So just keep that in mind when you're looking across all the stats here. So then we've got O-line. Um, so we've got the rushing O-line rank. We've got the uh, pass protection O-line rank. And then we've got the opponent's defensive rushing D-line and defensive um, passing, uh, you know, the pass rush on the D-line ranking there as well. And then fantasy points against the position. So for Miami, Miami's matchup against Jacksonville, this is Jacksonville's rank against the quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, and running back. So they've been pretty bad to every position except outside of wide receiver. They were, they're were about middle of the league in terms of uh, fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So that is there for every single matchup. This is where I start, and I start narrowing down the teams that I want to target and just kind of get an overall feel for the slate, um, looking at the totals, which games are high scoring, which ones are projected to be low scoring, and then kind of digging into the stats for each team and seeing why they're projected that way and see, um, like I said, narrowing down the teams that I want to target on Sunday or Thursday um, if we're talking showdowns. So after that... Um, I go through the depth chart every week, so I'll just kind of go over that. You can go every team's depth charts here, so I go through and look at that. Um, you can quick link to any team here, so if you want to see San Francisco's depth chart rather than scrolling down and trying to find it or doing a control F to search them, you can just go to hover over San Francisco and click on that link. It'll take you right to San Francisco's. I'll um, show you the running back one, two, three for the week. Obviously, I haven't got this week's done, but this is where you're going to find this depth chart information. That depth chart information is also um, visible on the individual tab. So I'll just jump over to running backs here real quick. Here's the depth chart over here in col column C. That's going to show you uh, the running back. So if you're kind of deciding between um, one or two, you can kind of look at where they sit on each team's depth chart. Now, for the individual player positions, I'm going to start at quarterback. So we've got the slate. You're going to see this on every individual position tab. Uh, TNF, Thursday night football, down at the bottom you're going to see Sunday night football, Monday night football. Um, you're only going to see, I cover showdown slates for only the primetime slates, the Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night. So you're going to see those prices for those games, and it's going to be blank for the Sunday main slates. I just don't have time to be getting into the showdowns for those because I am into the main slate. So we've got the player, uh, the quarterback, the team, the opponent they're playing, DraftKings and FanDuel pricing, like I said, for showdown as well um, for those primetime games. Vegas information, so we've got the spread, we've got the over-under, we've got the team projected points. Then we've got stats for the season. Um, we've got games played, passing attempts, completions, completion percentage, passing yards, touchdowns, yards per attempt. So we can kind of get a feel of guys. This is where I really like to look for upside. Look at Russell Wilson, 9.7 yards per attempt. He likes to take shots downfield. This is the stat that tells us that. This is something I will use for GPPs. Um, cash games, I'm kind of looking at uh, attempts per game. I want a quarterback that's going to throw a lot or a quarterback that if he doesn't throw a lot, I want him to be able to you know, use his legs to really help us get a nice floor for cash games as well. I've got those rushing stats over here. Um, we've got passing yards per game. We've got air yards per attempt. So again, that combined with yards per attempt is something I look at for upside. And then we get into rushing, rushing attempts, rushing yards, uh, yards per attempt, attempts per game. Um, so as you can see, Cam Newton, uh, Kyler Murray, Josh Allen are kind of leading the way right now with nine, ten and a half, and thirteen rushing attempts per game. That gives that gives them a common that gives them a really nice floor for cash games. Um, you know they're taking away running back, they're taking away running back touches, obviously. But from a quarterback standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to use these types of quarterbacks in cash games, um, especially looking at Josh Allen. He's not only averaging nine rushing attempts, 37 and a half rushing yards per game. He's averaging right now. We're only two games in, so this is a small sample. But he's also averaging over 360 passing yards per game as well. So that's a great combination um, for a quarterback that you're looking for in cash games or all formats for that matter. He's got a ton of upside. So then um, with the rushing, 
I've also got here the defensive rushing yards per game allowed. So it just kind of gives us a look. If you've got a rushing quarterback and he's facing a defense that, you know, maybe doesn't uh, game plan as well to rushing quarterbacks, gives up a lot of rushes like Miami does, um, then we can start to uh, break that down a little bit more as well. So then we've got team ranks in blue. That's going to show the percent of the percentage of plays that are passes for that team, um, that team's pace, the ranking in passing yards per game, like the passing offensive ranks, that's what that is. And then right beside that, we've got the opponent's passing defensive rank and the difference between the two. Obviously, a high number is going to be good. Um, looking at this is Dallas. Dallas has got the number three passing offense right now, while Seattle is dead last in passing defense. That's a plus 29 right there. That is the biggest one on the slate, so that is somewhere I'm going to target. Um, really hel helps me break down and say that Dak is going to be a great play this week. Also got a high total there as well, so it just all combines together. So then we see O-line and opponent's defensive D-line. So the O-line for Dallas is ranked ninth in the pass uh, protection, or, or sorry, yeah, in pass protection right now, while the opponent's defense, Seattle here is ranked 24th in, uh, you know, in their pass rush right now. So that's a good combination there. Both are sitting in green. And then we've got red zone offense. So Cowboys are 8th in red zone offense right now, while Seattle is 26th in red zone defense. And then Seattle also allows a 30, or ranks 31st in fantasy points against position. Now, Instead of coming back to this video, which you definitely can come back and review it throughout the season to kind of see how the sheet works, I'm going to share it in chat quite a bit as well. You're also going to want to look at the top here. So if you're wondering what any of the stats are, um, this little triangle in the top right hand corner just means I've added a note. So you can go and just hover over any of these headers here and it's going to tell you what that stat means. So for instance, team pass percentage, uh, team passing percentage, is the percentage of total plays that are passes. So it's just going to kind of give you a quick description of what those stats are. So make sure to utilize that. Um, that's something I brought in this year because I had a lot of questions on a daily basis of what does this stat mean. Um, so I really wanted to add that. So moving on to running backs is going to be a little bit different here for running backs. The slate's going to be the same. Like I said, the depth chart is there. Player name, team, opponent, um, main slate, and showdown pricing. We've got the Vegas information here, same thing. Scrolling over and looking at the stats, this is where we get a lot of advanced stats for running backs and wide receivers, tight ends, um, a lot of different stuff that we can pull in here and look at to help us. So first of all, just your basic rushing stats, games played, rushing attempts, total, um, yard, total rushing yards, total touchdowns, yards per attempt, uh, average yards per game. And then we've got red zone rushing. Um, so how many rushes has that player had inside the 20, inside the 10, inside the 5? Um, the percentage of that team's rushes inside the 20 yard line and how many red zone touchdowns that player has. This is going to be key um, when looking. I, I look at this more. What I want for cash games, obviously, is attempts. Um, we'll get into the touches here in a minute. But for GPP, obviously, we want upside. So I want running backs that get a lot of attempts inside the red zone because obviously they're going to be a lot closer to the end zone. Chance to get those six points for touchdowns. So then we're going to look at the player receiving. Here as well, it's very important. Full PPR on DraftKings, half PPR on FanDuel. So we've got uh, total targets, average targets per game, target percentage. So that's the percentage of targets that that player gets in, in relation to total targets for his team. Then we've got receptions, um, reception yards, yards per target. I'm going to be adding catch rate. I see that that is not here, which is just receptions divided by targets. Um, total touchdowns. So then we've got red zone receiving as well. Same thing, how many targets um, the player gets inside the red zone, inside the 20-yard line. The red zone target percentage, percentage of targets he gets inside the red zone of all the team's red zone targets. Red zone catch percentage and then red zone touchdowns. And then we add that all up into totals, like this would be your scrimmage yards. So total touches, total scrimmage yards, um, how many yards per touch, how many yards per game. Um, this snap percentage, this is the percentage of snaps the players on the field versus the team's total snaps during the game. And touch percentage is something I put together. This is off of the running back touch share sheet. This is the percentage of touches that this player has in relation to all the running backs um, on the team. The only team that's really different, I don't count quarterbacks, I just want to do the running back volume. Um, the only team that is going to be different is uh, Chicago. 
Um, Cordero Patterson kind of operates as a running back, so I've included him in that running back touch share um, as well. So then same as the quarterbacks, we've got the team ranks over here, team rush percentage, um, team pace, team rushing offensive rank versus the opponent's defensive rushing defense. Um, and then that difference again, green is going to be good, red is going to be bad. We've got the offensive line this time looking at pass protect or sorry rush protection, um, not really rush protection, but um, rushing O line their pass rush blocking, and then we've got the opponent's uh, rush defense in there as well. And then we've got red zone data, red zone offense versus opponent's red zone defense, and fantasy points against the running back. Moving on to wide receivers and tight ends, which are going to be similar here. I'm not going to go too deep into tight ends because it's going to be the same. Um, again, we've got slate, player, uh, slate pricing for showdowns and main slate, Vegas information. We've got the receiving information here, so games, targets, targets per game for that player, target percentage. Again, that's the share of that player gets of the targets for his entire team. Receptions, catch percentage, total receiving yards, um, yards, average yards per target touchdowns and then we get into some advanced stats yards after the catch we've got a dot which is average depth of target so that is another another thing for wide receivers i look at from a gpp standpoint i want receivers that are getting the ball down the field um, not just catching it over the middle for four or five yard gains i want those chunk plays um, we can find that with a dot same with yards after the catch um, more uh, I guess that would be more running backs. It would be contact, yards after contact. We're going to be looking at that as well. And then we've got red zone um, information as well as snap percentage for wide receivers. So we can start comparing wide receivers on each team. Um, injuries are going to flaw this information a little bit, but it still gives us an insight uh, into players, and there will be a, more of a breakdown of that. I'll post that kind of weekly as a into chat, uh, looking at some teams and stuff like that. So then again, team ranks. We've got team pass percentage, pace, um, passing offensive rank, defensive passing rank, uh, the difference between the two, again, pass protection O-line versus pass rush D-line, red zone offense versus red zone defense, opponent red zone defense, and then opponent fantasy points against the wide receiver position. Tight end looks exactly the same besides there's tight ends listed. And then going on to the defensive tab, we've got all the teams, the slates, uh, pricing, Vegas information. So this the only thing difference with Vegas on the defensive side is we're looking at the opponent's projected points, not the not the team that we're looking at's projected points. So obviously Indy's facing the Jets, who are only projected for 16.3 points right now, um, which is the lowest on the slate. So that's going to be in green. That's good for the Colts because points are obviously uh, detrimental to your overall total for your defense. So then we've got points per game allowed versus the opponent's points per game, um, breaking that down into passing and rushing as well. And then sacks, we've got uh, amount of sacks that team has. Um, their blitz percentage, percentage of the time that they send a blitz outside the you know the four pass rushers. Um, if they're running a four three, three pass rushers. If they're running a three four, opponent sacks allowed. So obviously we want to face opponent. We want a defense that's facing opponent with a bad O line that allows a lot of sacks. Um, opponent sack percentage. So ten and a half percent of the time, Houston here is allowing a uh, sack on the quarterback. So that's good. We want a high number for that. And then we've got uh, opponent D-line ranking uh, versus the, sorry, team D-line ranking versus the opponent's offensive pass rushing ranking, and then the difference there. So as you can see, Pittsburgh and Indy um, are in tremendous matchups this week, um, according to all the stats, and that's why they are kind of priced up there as well. So that kind of covers all the positions, everything that I'm looking at there. If you want to know, um, so on Thursdays, we've got the showdown. I will start highlighting showdown plays um, on the individual position tab here. But then I will also have, um, I have a tab for top targets and I rank my plays. So I not only give you my core plays, GPP plays, value plays, but I also want to rank them as well, which should help you um, go ahead and construct your showdown lineups. I play the 20 max every single week on, like I said, Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night football. Always the 20 max. I'm just kind of playing around with some strategies and stuff, but that's kind of what I've, I've decided to do this year. So I will post that uh, usually Thursday afternoon, and then starting Friday, I'll start highlighting plays for Sunday's main slate, and then I will have rankings for those as well at each individual position.
as well as some notes associated with those players to kind of give you some insight as to why I'm targeting them, why I have them ranked so high, why I have them ranked so low, just to kind of help you out there a little bit as well. Um, and I said, check back on the depth charts throughout the day. Uh, red, you can also check the legend. So as I start highlighting plays on the sheet, come over here, you can check the legend. Green is a core play, and pretty much what that means is he's going to be a core play in all formats for me. Someone in my 20 max builds um, for GPP that I'm going to have probably 30 to 40% exposure, pretty high exposure to those players. The players in blue, which are going to be labeled here as GPP plays, those are just players I feel have a high ceiling, but don't have, you know, they're not safe on a week to week basis enough to use as a cash game play. So uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit less exposure than the core plays in my GPP builds, and I won't have them, any of these blue plays in cash games. Value plays are just a player, usually in um, like the low, not necessarily a punt, but a, someone that I think can uh, definitely outdo their value and give us like 3, 4x value for their price. Those are going to be the players in yellow. And if there's a value play that I feel isn't cash worthy, I guess you could say, he's going to be in blue. Um, so you will see some some players that are kind of down that 3, 4k range that are in blue. And if you're wondering why those, I just won't be using them in cash games. While if you see players in yellow, those are players I will value plays. I will consider cash game plays, just players I feel don't have a high ceiling for whatever reason, but do because of volume or whatever, do give us a nice floor. This is maybe like on DraftKings, a running back that doesn't get a lot of catches, um, but he is getting you know, 15 to 20 carries per week in a favorable matchup where maybe they're favorites. Um, where I feel that he's going to get the yardage and, and those carries, but just the upside is just not going to be there, whether it be maybe a low-scoring game. Those are going to be cash games only. And then for injuries, uh, light pink here, kind of light red or whatever you want to call it, that's just kind of doubtful. Um, those are players that I'm going to be checking back on. Um, those are going to be also questionable players that are maybe trending towards not playing. And then we've got uh, deep red here, which is going to be injured or out. Something I will be adding to the sheet here is a injury report. Will be like a list of all the players at different positions that I'm tracking, what their injury is, um, and kind of when we're expecting to hear about that. So that's going to be new. I think for this week it's going to be in chat. You're going to be able to find that in chat. But moving forward, I'm going to add that to the sheet so all the information is there in one place. That pretty much covers everything for me in terms of my DFS sheet. This is something that comes out every week, usually released Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. Um, the schedule for when the content comes out on the sheet is listed in chat as well. And if you have any questions, just definitely, definitely hit me up in chat. I'm available almost 24-7. I, I do sleep sometimes, but really not very much. Um, so hit me up with some questions. I can explain some stuff to you, whether it be contest selection, how to go about looking at more advanced stats in the sheet and how I go about constructing my lineups and narrowing down. Definitely hit me up about that as well. Um, there's going to be some videos coming in the future, talking strategy, going a little bit deeper into this. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, yeah, thanks for all the support and let's go out there and let's get some green screens this weekend. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good luck.